Natural Selection was founded on the premise that ecotourism, when done right, can have a profound impact on wildlife areas, on wildlife protection, and on the people who live in those wildlife areas sustainably. In this area of the Okavango Panhandle, we've got about um, 18,000 elephants and there's around 16,000 people. On average, um, one person a year is killed by an elephant in this area, but last year we had two people killed by elephants. And so we've started this initiative, the Elephant Express, to provide transport for, for those most in need. The people most in need have been identified by the community members themselves and they have picked out that it's, it's children who are the most vulnerable and the most um, in need of, of support for, for transport. The reason why Claws was uh, started is, is it was because there was this massive killing of lions by poisoning. So lots of cattle roaming around here unattended. And this is where the serious problem is coming from. There's also lions in, in the area and then eventually farmers just um, lose it and then they kill the lions. We wanted the buy-in of the community and uh, what links us with the community is the livestock. And then so we had to uh, form something that will bring communities and researchers together uh, with one goal. By protecting the cattle or looking after the cattle, we are indirectly protecting the lions. It's a win-win situation and everyone is happy. My name's Ben and I'm, I've been lucky enough to be funded by Natural Selection to do my PhD on leopards here in Kwai Private Reserve. We're doing some pioneering work on how leopards are communicating across the landscape. My name is Sarah Tawile. My thesis is based on uh, estimating the habitat specific densities of leopards in the Kwai Private Reserve. Ah, we have 386 photos. Oof. We have 15 audio recording devices that we put out. <coughs> I'll just be happy to see a leopard make a sound. Like, you know, that, that'd be incredible. I would like to say thank you very much to Natural Selection for funding my studies. If it went for them, I don't know when I was going to do my master's really, so thank you very much. Most of the little ones when we were just idling here, they didn't have access to education. This school was it's a project for the community to benefit. So it's, it's a blessing to this village. Since opening of this school, there is a great big difference. I feel great about this project. There is a project that has been taking place where people that have been walking for long distances to gather grass have been provided an opportunity to do what they wish. They have been provided with transportation, food and also sleep in tents where they can harvest for as long as they want and then return to their village when they have done. This project helps the old and the new people that have been gathering grass in long distances. Since people they don't have uh, much of employment, um, this is what will give them at least something to, to make a living out of. We've had quite a few accidents in the villages in terms of wildlife. So what KPR has done is we have put in 32 little solar panels and lights that go inside and outside. This solar panels change her life because uh, in the past just live in the dark, but today it's live in light. The project which have been assisted by natural selections in my community, uh, the first one is the, the primary school. 
So what has been done firstly here is education. It's basically creating and crafting environmental stewards to give them an awareness of the benefits that they can gain from conserving and taking care of their natural resources all around them. Children have been taken out into uh, the national park also to have this moment of time. We try and, and bring in an aspect of awe back into their lives so that they, they can get back the wonder of nature. Education is the backbone of everything. Botswana has the longest large mammal migration in Africa. And in the 1960s, it stopped, and then 50 years later, it started again. But the landscape has changed a lot since then. So we are working with stakeholders in the area through an organization called Round River Conservation. And we're doing that to ensure that the migration can thrive, but that also that communities can thrive alongside it. We work very hard to create a very important sustainable partnerships with communities, with conservation organizations, and then on the tourism side we have fantastic partnerships on the ground that provide guests with a very unique experience. And so our commitment has been from the beginning to always make sure any guests stay with us, a portion of that goes to the projects in that area. We realize that this will be an ever-changing process and we look forward to seeing where it goes.